Hello there. This is my second lecture on operational amplifiers, theory, and applications. Okay. Uh, we are going to talk about current sources for grounded loads that don't require a floating power supply. Current sources using op amps give a much better performance than just transistors and resistors by itself because the magical feedback of op amps will increase that performance and that accuracy. Let's see this circuit in here. Okay. It includes an op amp, three resistors, and that PNP transistor in there. And you have a voltage divider between R1 and R2. That's just to set the voltage. And since the op amps has the duty and the task to make sure that the voltage always at the non-inverting will be equal to that inverting in there. So that means whatever voltage across R1 will be presented across that R in there. And that, of course, will set the current through our, our load. And we have in here a PMP transistor in here. This is a current booster. See, amps usually don't give more than about 20 milliamps of currents. And when you use a transistor in there, or maybe even a Darlington pair, you can increase that, that current in there to hundreds of milliamps and even to amps. Okay? So how does the circuit work? Like I said before, you got a voltage divider rule between R1 and R2. And whatever voltage is across R1 will be presented across that non-inverting in there. And the op amp will do whatever it takes regardless to the obstacles in the way. If you have resistors, if you have transistors, diodes, whatever, it will do whatever it takes within its compliance range to make sure that the voltage across, that the voltage at the non-inverting input, it equals to that inverting input in there. And in a case like this, that means VR1 will be equal to the voltage across the R. And that actually sits the current. Because the same current that goes through R is equal to IE. Okay? And IE splits into both one, one IB that will be supplied by the op amp, and the IC will be supplied to the load. So that means the current across our load is not a hundred percent accurate to the to the current across that R because you got that missing IB in there. So in case if you have if you want to use a circuit like this, you have to make sure that you are using a transistor with a high HFE or a high beta, something like 200, 300 or 400. So you'll be willing to miss something like about you know one percent or a fraction of one percent of current. Using, using, when you use a transistor like that. Okay, so I out, <coughs> I out will be equal to I R, whatever I R is in here, and that I, I R is nothing but the V C C minus V N, which is the voltage across R one. That's the I out that we have in here, and don't forget that we are, will be missing that I B in there. Now the problem in a case like this is that VCC must be well regulated. I mean an ripple that you can see in here, okay, is going to be shown as a ripple current across the load. Why? Because the voltage in here, when a ripple is right, the voltage of VCC it will be fraction of it will be presented also at the input voltage which means it also will be presented across that R in there so you're gonna have a bit of ripple current on your load increasing and decreasing a bit according to whatever that ripple divided by that R1 or that R okay 
And how to fix a situation like that? You have our second circuit in here, okay, which is an improved version of that one in there. You have in here two op amps, okay, and two transistors, a PNP and an NPN. You have your V in in here, and this op amp will do whatever it takes to make sure that the non-inverting equal the inverting. So that means V in will be also presented in here, regardless of the obstacles that you got in here of that VPE of that transistor in there. I note that we are not talking about any temperature drift or anything like that, because regardless to how VBE changes with temperature, that op amp will take care of it. This is the magic of op amps when it works or in action. <coughs> so that means VN presented it here and also presented it here and presented across R1. So that sets a current across R1. That current is the same current going through R2. And that current in there is nothing but IR1 equals IR2, which equals VN over R1. It's the same thing that the current that's going here. And note that when we have that triple voltage over there, okay, that triple in there, it will be presented in here. But the idea that the, the since we are sending only current through R2, that is not affected by that trouble in there, because that trouble will be the, the, the voltage the voltage across across the collector of that transistor will take care of it. Okay? So you're gonna have a swing in here, okay, but the voltage will be fixed across R2. And that 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 trouble in there. The, the collector of that transistor will take care of that trouble in there. So you're gonna you're gonna have a bit of trouble in there, but it will not affect our accuracy. Okay. And like we said before, IC2 or amp 2 will have the same task again to make sure that whatever voltage is presented is at the non-inverting equals the inverting. Okay. And that means exactly that whatever voltage we have across R2 will be presented across R3. Exactly the same thing as this resistor in here. But in a case like this, we just avoided whatever inaccuracy that might happen because of that trouble voltage across that VCC. And like we said before, okay, that swinging wave at the collector of Q1 will be also at the emitter of that Q2 but it makes no difference because that current in there will be fixed and will not be affected by that ripple in there. So in a case like this, we're going to have the exact current without any disturbance by that ripple voltage in there. Okay, But the same inaccuracy like we did before. We know that IE always, always equal to IB plus IC. So the error, the only error that you're going to have in here is that you're going to be missing that IB in there. But if you are using high HFE for that transistor in there, that's no problem. I mean, it might be tolerated. Later on, we'll see how we're going to remedy this problem when we are using MOSFETs or FITs, okay, where you have no IB or just a leakage current in there, and you're going to have more accurate current across your load. So what is I out in a case like this is equal to, is nothing but VR2 over R3. Okay, VR2 over R3 because they have the, share the same voltage. And that equals, if we included all the equations together, that it equals V in over R1. Okay. It's that current in here. Multiplied by R2. Okay, that sets the voltage across R2 divided by R3. Sorry, let me move that hand. V in over R1 multiplied by R2 over R3. Okay, or equals also the V in multiplied by R2 divided by R1 R3. It's the same thing. Okay, so that's I out or the current across our load, the constant current across our load. And variable volt is not important anymore. And here they are talking about 
for a fixed V in delta V C E Q and equal delta V C C which equals V R. We are talking about that like we said before. That voltage storage tank inside that collector of Q and will take whatever rib that you got across there. Okay, it will compensate for it and nothing will happen. Still have an accurate circuit. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, now we are talking about accurate current sinks. We call them current sinks, not current sources anymore, because the load are connected to the VCC, not to the ground anymore. So we better call them with their names. We call them a current sinks. And what do we have in here? We have the industry standard 355. That's a fit input op amp. I know what the input for that, the input for the IB for it. It's, I don't know, maybe it's, it's in the nano range or even the peak range, I don't know. I don't recall anymore. Okay. So we have our, that 5.5 five in there. Our 5.5 five op amp. Operated on dual rail, minus 15 or plus 15. And the idea of operating it at that, because they don't know exactly if you are going to operate near the ground. If you are going to operate near the ground, you have to have a negative voltage or a negative rail for that op amp. If you know you are within the compliance range of that op amp, maybe you can use just a single, just a single rail power supply, plus or minus without that minus VEE. And we have our end channel MOSFET in here. And like we said before, we're gonna get rid of that IB in there, the IB that caused a bit of error in there. We got our MOSFET in there. And how does the circuit work? We got our V in in here, and in case you want, we want to have an accurate current source, you have to get your V in from a stable, stable source, okay, like a reference voltage or whatever, and that voltage in there will be presented at the inverting to that op amp will take take care of that task in there, and it will move its output up and down until it makes sure that those two voltages are the same. So that means you have your V in in here, across R1 in there, and that sits our current in here. So the current going through that, 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 that source will exactly be the same current going across that drain in there. And like we said before, we're gonna get rid of that IB by doing something like that. And the same current going through R1 will be going through our our load. And the current in a case like this would be equal just V in over 1000, over one kilo ohm. So whatever your voltage is divided by one K, this resistor sets the current along with that, that V in in there. Okay, so there is no IB, an accurate current source, where IL is nothing but V in divided by R1. Okay, this is just an example of an accurate current source. Another circuit also that we have in here, this one uses a fit, okay, not a, not a MOSFET. You know, for a MOSFET you have to have voltage at the gate greater than, than the source. In the case of the fit, no, it's, it's the opposite. It has to be always negative than the, than, the, than the source, okay? The gate, the gate has to be more negative than, than the source. That's why we are putting these, these arrows in there. And how does the circuit work? It works in a similar manner like that one in there. We got our V in, in here. That op amp will do its magic to make sure that Vn always is presented at the non-inverting, at the inverting, sorry. And that means we are setting the voltage that we got in here, which is across that 100 ohm, one watt. One watt means you are gonna pass a lot of current. And you are cascading those two devices together. Look at this configuration. It's a beautiful configuration, by the way. Where you got your fit to driving that, that uh, and P and transistor. Okay, so in a case like this, we avoided 
that IB in there. Why? Because IB simply is going to join across that source and across that, that what they call it, that, that drain to go to the load again. We have nothing. All the error that we have in here, just a little leakage, just leakage. Fit only give leakage, not even not even current, just a leakage. It's so 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 small. Okay. And what else? Okay, we have our current across our load in here. We set it, and that current splits in the two. One part goes to IE of that transistor, and the other one will go across that that one K resistor in there. And if the if the current is very low, as a matter of fact, you don't have to turn that transistor on. It will be sufficient to just go across that 1K through the source and through the drain. But if that current increases, and of course it's going to increase, that's what I am said just already. If you are going to increase that current much, okay, so that transistor will start conducting, okay, and when it starts conducting, it's going to take much of the current would be going through that that bipolar transistor okay and I have our IB both direction because I don't know exactly what type of ump amp you got in here if the inputs are PNPs or NPNs or whatever so that indicate what direction the current is going to take that's a, that's an error but who cares about a little error I don't know that probably in the range of pico amps or nano amps or whatever so nobody really cares about that that's accurate enough the way it is okay and that q1 is the 25459 and then q2 is the 25192 and you can use probably hundreds of transistors or fits to do the same job that you see in here okay let's move forward See, the idea when you see a lot of configurations, you start to have the feeling for how op amps are used and gives you ideas for your own design. For a configuration like this, where you got, where this configuration can be a follower and can be an inverter at the same time. Okay, you, you throw the switch at the invert and you got yourself an inverter in here. You give a positive voltage in here, you got a negative voltage here. Plus one volt in here gives you a minus one volt in here. Those resistors are equal. Okay. You got a minus one volt in here, minus two volts in here, you got a plus two volts in here. Like we said, it's, it's an inverting configuration. And those resistors are equal. You flip that switch again to that follower, it becomes a follower. Why it becomes a follower? Because that op amp will make sure that then inverting equal the inverting that means zero current across the 10k and when you have a zero current across the 10k you're going to have a zero current also across r2 or the other 10k in there and what does that mean that means whatever voltage you've got here you're going to have it in here so i have a plus one volt in, you're going to have another one plus volt in here it's just a follower okay and the same circuit also in another configuration the more you see, the more you know, the more you learn. It's the same thing in here, okay? You throw that switch in here. This circuit becomes an inverter. When you throw it in here, it's nothing but a resistor just connected to the ground. And this is an inverting configuration where you get a resistor going to the inverting input and another resistor going to the output from that inverting input. And they are equal, the same thing. So you've got they have to be equal because it operates as a follower too. So when you give in here a minus one volt in here, you got a plus one volt in there. Okay. Or the opposite, you put a plus two volts in there, you got a minus two volts in here. That's when it's operated as as an inverter. Okay. Now we throw that switch the other way here. It becomes a follower. And like we said before, it's the same thing. Since no current, since Vn is presented at the non-inverting, okay, at that op amp will do whatever it takes to make that non-inverting -invert, equal the inverting. So that means Vn is also will be presented at the inverting input, 
And with Vn in here, that means no current is going through that tank, and there is zero. And the same thing will happen to that resistor in there. No current in here, no current in here also. Okay, which means that you got your follower. You put a plus one volt in here, you got your plus one volt in there. Okay, so on the invert again is equal to minus one. When it's follower again is equal plus one. And in here, a follower with a bootstrap. I made a full lecture in bootstrapping, but that was for transistors. But in here, it's the same idea, okay? But different devices and different configuration. I don't know, it's remember, maybe it's, it's lecture 12 on transistors or lecture 11 on transistors applications. I made a series, or still, that series is still going. I haven't added much to it lately, but still going. I believe I have about 15 lectures on transistors. Okay. So how does this circuit work? This circuit is exactly for an AC boot strapping, not for, for a DC, of course. And the idea when you put something like a follower or whatever for that op amp in there, okay, a circuit like this, when it's it's very it's basic form, okay, the Z in you can never increase that resistance. Even though you have a tremendous resistance across the op amp, you can never use it because you cannot put just a cap in there. Because that cap will 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 will, will start charging and that op amp will, will will saturate. So you have to include the resistor in there. Once you put the resistor in there, you are killing the in. Okay. So looking this way you're gonna see nothing but that R as a Z in. Regardless to how high it is, even if it's 100 k, it's not that that high. Sometimes you are requiring something like about in the mega ohms or 100 of mega ohms range of input re resistance. So this will not be sufficient. So what do we do about that? We do that bootstrapping in there, where we are able to increase the Z in looking into the circuit. Uh, how do we go by doing that? It's a symbol. Whatever voltage is presented in here, like we said before, it has to be an, an, an AC, okay? That voltage will be presented at, at the non-inverting input. And that op amp will do whatever it takes to make that non-inverting -invert, -invert, equal the inverting. So that means Vn is already here, okay? We, and it's coupled to this, to, 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 to this point by this cap, this one microfarad cap, it's coupled. So that means whatever Vn is presented at the output and presented at Vx, that means Vx in a way or another is equal to whatever voltage is at the inverting. And when these voltages are equal, that means that current is zero. And like if you're having an infinite resistance or an open resistor in here, that's the idea of bootstrapping. So looking this way, you're going to have a very or an extreme high resistance in there. Or high impedance okay the gain for dc will be equal zero because it's not dedicated for dc for a dc near get your zero the gain for ac it will be equal plus one so this is a follower for an ec with a high input impedance okay the z in this case will be very high okay let's see what else we have configurations and the more we see the more we learn but I think it's about time to stop right here and we'll continue with that in lecture number three I want to thank you for watching if you have not subscribed yet please subscribe the encouragement is appreciated and thank you all and have a nice day see you next lecture